I'm going to be in Joshua chapter 10. Now in Joshua chapter 10, you've got the adversaries are gathered together against Joshua and Israel, of course. Just like you'll see throughout the book of Joshua picturing the enemies of God, the enemies of Israel and the tribulation gathering together against Israel and against Jesus Christ at the second coming. But if you remember, Joshua and Israel had been deceived into making peace with the Gibeonites back in the last chapter. We talked about the Gibeonite deception, if you've been going along with it in chapter 9. But that angered the surrounding kings in the land with that taking place. So they're going to go make war against the Gibeonites now. Since Gibeonites have joined up with their enemy, now they're mad at them, they're going to go against them now. Simply because they've made peace with Joshua. You know what that reminds me of? The moment you make peace with our Joshua, the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have at least five armies come against you. You're going to have the world, the devil, the flesh, the cults, and insert any enemy you have for the fifth. You have to remember that you have the man of war himself living in you and you've got to push through these things with his help. This means you're going to have to persevere. You're going to have to rest in his promises to push through until the finish line of the rapture, no matter what anybody says. But Joshua 10 shows us some things that we're going to have to persevere through before we can make it to the final destination. Now, here are a few things to persevere through. Look at Joshua 10, starting in verse 1. It came to pass, now it came to pass, when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai, and had utterly, utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king. So he had done to Ai and her king and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city and one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai. And all the men thereof were mighty. Wherefore Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hoham, king of Hebron, and unto Pyram, king of Jarmuth, and unto Jephiah, king of Lachish, and unto Deber, king of Eglon. So he just calling up all his buddies on the phone sending all his buddies a text message, giving out all these emails. You know, he's trying to get all his boys, and they're going to come attack the Gibeonites. Come up unto me and help me, he says, that we may smite Gibeon. If you're so tough, why don't you take them out? You know, why you got to get all your buddies? But it says, For it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, and the king of the Hebron, and the king of Jarmuth, and the king of Lachish, and the, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together, there they go, gathering themselves together against some people that they hate, and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon, and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants." Come up to us quickly and save us and help us for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So you see, now Israel, they've made this league with the Gibeonites. Now they got to go rescue them. But this is the first thing you're going to have to persevere through. Adversaries gathered together against you. These five kings, Adonai Zedek, Hoham, Piram, Jephiah, and Deber. Crazy sounding names. You're going to have some crazy people like that against you. And they're ready to attack Gibeon for making peace with Joshua. And these adversaries are gathered together against Joshua and Israel. Since they're made a league with Gibeon, they're also against them too. And the five kings' anger has waxed hot against the Gibeonites who've chosen to make this league with Joshua and Israel. And the Gibeonites come to Joshua and they say, Hey, man, you know, you made this covenant with us. You made this league with us. Now slack not thy hand from thy servants. And Joshua, he's probably thinking, why did I make that covenant? And he comes to rescue because he made the covenant. Joshua and the mighty men, they ascend from Gilgal to the fight. So these wicked kings must now take on more than they can handle. The Almighty and his army. You see, not just the Gibeonites, but the Almighty and his army. And with the world around Joshua stacked against him, 
He can go in without fear because the Lord reassures him here in verse 8 of the same chapter. He sa it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand, and there shall not a man of them stand before thee. So Joshua's got these promises. So he's not afraid. He's not afraid of adversaries coming against him. And you know, the adversaries are against Jesus Christ in the church today. Joshua is a picture of Jesus Christ, the top of Jesus Christ. So prophetically, this chapter is a picture of the Antichrist armies gathered together against Jesus Christ and his army. See Revelation 19.4. About the second coming where we come back with him. See Jude 14. Where Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. You see, Joshua is the same name as Jesus. Jehovah saves. He's a, he's a picture of what we're going through today. But Adonai, I know Adonai Zedek means Lord of Righteousness. That king Adonai Zedek, his name means Lord of Righteousness, even though he's evil. So he pictures the Antichrist. Who pretends to be righteous. You see? Lord of righteousness. He's just a pretender. Like the Antichrist. So you've got Jesus Christ. Versus the Antichrist. Just like Adonai Zedek. Versus Joshua. It's a picture. But the Amorites that dwell in the mountains. Are gathered together. Against Joshua and Israel. And the fact that they are in the mountains. You know what that pictures? It pictures spirit, spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 6 said they were in the mountains. You see, right now we are in a spiritual battle, and the wickedness in high places are gathered together against the Lord and against the church. Ephesians 6, 2, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You see it all around you. You see a people attacking the King James Bible. They're trying to do everything in the world they can to get you away from the King James and get you into a different Bible. You got the world out there trying to get you out of the Bible completely. And the world is just against everything that has to do with God today. You know, when the enemy comes against you, you have to go to Jesus just as the Gibeonites went to Joshua. They said, slack not thy hand from helping us. And that's what you got to do when the world's coming against you. You go to your Joshua, the Lord Jesus. So they said to Joshua, come up, come up quickly, save us and help us. Well, that reminds me of what John said in Revelation 22, 20. Well, you know, he, he, he talks about, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. He's telling Jesus to come. So what, what could be better? Then the Lord Jesus Christ coming to get you right now in the rapture, giving you your superhero body, and then you can really fight at the second coming. But since the world and the dark side of the spirit world are against you, we don't have any room to be against each other. We, we got the flesh, the world and the devil gathered together against us. We don't have a chance if we go into this thing without the Lord and it's not going to help us if we go against each other. So Adonai Zedek heard how that the inhabitants of Israel had made peace with Joshua and Israel. Now they are against them. Just like the world when it found out you made peace with Jesus Christ. So you're going to have adversaries gathered together against you. Number two, another thing you're going to have to persevere through is attempts by the flesh to shine. Your flesh. Notice in verse 7, Joshua 10, 7. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. So in Joshua, verse 7, Joshua 10, 7. Joshua and the mighty men of Israel ascend up to the rescue of Gibeon, and a great wonder happens. The sun stands still, and the Lord makes sure that he shines through. You see? Now, you're... you're so your flesh is going to want to shine, even in the, the work you do for God. Your, your flesh wants to shine because it's the flesh. Your flesh is going to want to shine by ascending up alone. You see, with the type of manpower that Israel had with Joshua and the mighty men, a temptation would be to, put, to get this victory on their own or to try to be the hero of the story. But they're not the hero of the story. 
You're not the hero of the story. Joshua and those guys, they go out all night long. In verse 9, it says, Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the temptation is to glory in your own effort. Joshua was up all night. And then all of the long day too. It's easy to get prideful in that. It's easy to get prideful when you do something that's hard and you succeed. Your flesh wants the glory. Your flesh wants to shine. It wants to get any credit it can get. But Joshua has seen in the last chapter that failing to consult with the Lord ends badly. Also, the Lord makes them aware in verse 8 that he has delivered them up into their hand. Look in verse 8. It says in verse 8, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I had, have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a, a man of them stand before thee. He told Joshua no man will be able to stand before him, just like they won't have a place to stand before Jesus at the great white throne judgment, Psalm 1-5. But it's not because anything... It's not because of Joshua. It's because of the Lord. In verse 10, it says, The Lord the Lord discomfited them. The Lord slew them. The Lord chased them. And the Lord smote them. He used Israel to accomplish it, but he's the one that did it. He was the one behind the sword. You're not in this alone, but you'll be tempted to win it by yourself. Imagine if when you get to the judgment seat of Christ and the Lord shows you every good thing you did, but it was always Jesus Christ doing it, and you were just yielding to your members as instruments of right righteousness. Like when a father, you know, is showing his son how to swing the bat while it's still in his son's hands, and he's behind him trying to show him how to swing the bat. It's the dad that's swinging the bat for him, but the son is taking part in it too. So the Lord was swinging the sword for for Israel, you see. If it wasn't for him, they would have lost. Then verse 11, it shows that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them. More enemies died by the stones than by the swords of Israel. And you see, it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in, in the going down to Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died and they were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. The more you read, the less impressive Israel looks and the more impressive God looks because he's the one doing all the damage. At the second coming, the Lord lets us bruise Satan under our feet, Romans 16, but he, and he'll let us enter in the windows like a thief and get in swings with the sword, but it's the stone cut without hands that breaks the enemy to pieces, the Lord Jesus Christ, Daniel 2.45. It's the Lord Jesus Christ doing, fighting the battle, the, him getting the victory. And the sun, the S-U-N sun, stayed up until Israel had avenged themselves. Look at verse 13. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. So the Lord causes the sun to stand still. Just as at the second advent, the Lord comes back in flame and fire, taking vengeance to avenge himself. To avenge himself. And the sun does something then too. It doesn't shine. But he causes the sun to stay up until Israel avenges themselves. And this is the real avengers here. You know, the Hollywood heroes are, are just copycats of what you read about in Joel chapter 2 and Revelation 19. Verse 14 says, The Lord fought for Israel. Without him, they would have gotten clobbered, just like at the advent. You know, the Bible says, As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. They're, they would get wiped out by the Antichrist and his army if the Lord doesn't come down. You know, you don't want to allow the flesh to get the credit. The Lord wants you to work, but the good things you accomplish are simply Him working through you. So it's the sun, S-O-N, that should get the shine. And in Joshua 10, 12 through 14, the Lord who made and controls the sun causes it to stand still. 
and he made sure that he got the shine. The Lord wants to get the shine, but the flesh wants to block it out. It says in verse 12, Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Edgelon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. And then is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened to the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. As birds flying, so shall the Lord defend Israel, is what the Bible says. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him unto the camp to Gilgal. So you see, your, Jesus wants to shine, but your flesh wants to block it out and get the credit. He should get the credit. Don't glory in yourself. Don't glory in man. Let God get the credit. But I'm sure something in those mighty men of Israel and Joshua would have wanted to kill 800 Amorites in the dark, in the dark with his own sword. This way he could go down as a great man in Israel. You see, many Bible believers want to read the Bible 200 times and become somebody, a famous saint of church history. But who are they really, truly wanting to shine? God or themselves? When Jesus Christ comes back as the son of righteousness with healing in his wings, Malachi 4.2, he's going to get the shine. As he makes the sun go dark and the moon turn to blood, Joel 2.31, Matthew 24, and the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. But another thing you got to persevere through is the advances of deadly sins. These deadly sins trying to make advances in your life. Look at 16 through 26. It says in Joshua 10, 16, But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Mecca. And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave at Mecca. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave, and set men by it for to keep them. And stay ye not, but pursue after your enemies, and smite the hindmost of them. Suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God hath delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass, when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great, great slaughter, till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities, and all the people returned to the camp to Joshua and Mecca in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua... Then said Joshua, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so, and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass, when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel, and said unto the captains of the men of war which went with him, Come near, Put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. And afterward Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees. And they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. So these five kings fled to a cave. Joshua commands great stones be rolled over in front of the cave so they can't escape. And they end up putting their feet on the necks of those five kings. And those, those five kings can picture some deadly sins in your life. Who, for a time, may be absent. But you have to remember, there's still a threat. Even though maybe you've got some type of victory over them, it's, you've still got flesh, so it's still a threat. The five kings are running for their lives as women. Once again, this puts you in mind of the reactions of the mighty men at the second coming who's going to hide themselves in the dens and rocks of the mountains, Revelation 6.16. 6, and those five kings can picture many things. Maybe they picture the besetting chief sins in your life that seem to poke their head out of the cave and run things from time to time. Right now, they may be dormant in your life, but if you walk in the flesh, they're going to keep advance, making advances in your life. Joshua made sure that he put stones in front of the cave so that they couldn't get out. 
and caused trouble while Israel finished off more foes, you see. So you got to put a stopper in front of those pet sins. You got to put some stones in front of them to keep them from advancing in, in your life and taking over and causing you to give yourself over to them. You know, what if they got out and tried to do a peace treaty with Joshua? What if they thought, well, we'll just do like the Gibeonites. We'll do a peace treaty. Or use some wily thing that the devil had planned to deceive them with. You see, sin is deceptive. You know, the word stone reminds me of Jesus Christ. He's the great stone. He's, he's the stone cut without hands. He's the stone of stumbling, the rock of offense. He's the only thing that can keep my besetting sin from rearing its ugly head out of the cave. So to keep my sins from making advances in my life, I got to have the stones. The Lord Jesus Christ. How do you have him? Well, you fellowship with him. You, When you mess up, you t tell the Lord. You confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You get... The word of God, that's your stones. And you get you five stones every day. Get you five chapters or something every day. Or however many you do. And put stoppers in front of that cave so those deadly sins can't make advances. You see, the flesh is already dead to you. Though These five kings were, were still breathing but you could say they were as good as dead. There are five of them, which is the number of death. This pictures how Jesus Christ already has victory over death, but it's still running its course. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, 1 Corinthians 15, 26. You see, I'm still fighting this body, the, the body of this death, Romans 7, 24. I'm dead to sin, Romans 6, 2. The old man has been crucified, Romans 6, 6. This flesh is already dead to you. This means these chief sins that you walk around with every day are already dead to you, and Jesus Christ has given you victory over them. You just have to reckon yourself dead. In verses 19 through 20, Joshua and Israel smite the hindmost of the enemies while they let these five kings hide out in the cave. Verse 20 said some of the enemies entered into fenced cities. Look at verse 20. It says in verse 20, And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into fit cities. There are some sins that have a stronghold, and you'll have to fight them till you die. They just keep getting a stronghold in your life, entering into fit cities, doing, you know, just staying in your life, and you, you're having a hard time getting rid of them. You just got to reckon yourself dead. This, this, this flesh that wants to sin, it's already dead to you. In verse 20, Joshua tells his men to put your feet up on the necks of these kings. So they did. And this is a picture of you having victory over your deadly sins. And though five, the five kings are hanged on five trees, when Jesus Christ hung on the tree, he became my sin up there. He paid the payment and got the victory over it. But when it comes to my standing in Christ, I already have victory over death, hell, and the grave. My standing is undefeated. It's got a winning record because it's got the Lord's record. It wins through everything. So this is because my standing has the imputed righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. When God sees me, he sees Jesus Christ. When it comes to my state, it's completely different. Through this life, because of my sinful flesh, I win some, I lose some. Joshua has already taken some losses at Ai. And with the Gibeonites in chapter 9, he wins some, he loses some. But he's still got a winning record. You're not going to win every battle in the flesh. But you can have a winning record. You know, the sports teams like, the Golden State Warriors, they got the best record of all time, right? 73 and 9. But they still lost nine games. You can't win them all. But your goal should be to get your state to match the winning record of your standing as much as you possibly can. And in every battle, remember, the undefeated champion lives inside you. And he says to Joshua in verse 25, Fear not. 
nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight.